What's going on uh, guys? Today I just wanted to do a pretty much quick start guide to using the uh, RTL SDR and this is going to assume that you don't really know much about software to find radio, you, you never owned one, so we're going to start find, kind of from the basics. So once you receive your device, you're going to have a few parts here. Um, the main thing you're going to have is the actual dongle itself. And this is relatively simple. Uh, basically, this is the USB out that goes to the computer. This is your antenna port. It's a, called an SMA adapter. Another thing you're going to get is the actual antenna. So, or, ordinarily it comes about like this right here, okay? And you're going to have two sets of antennas you can actually screw onto it. You're going to have a larger telescopic set that you see here. And you're also going to have the smaller telescopic set that you see here. Both of these are useful in the fact that you need different sizes for your antenna to work with different frequencies. So for today's demonstrational purposes, I'm going to be using the bigger antennas because I'm going to be doing some things on the two meter bands. Um, so this is that antenna. And you just screw these on. Now there is a trick to knowing uh, the telescopic antenna there's a trick to it. Uh, there's a lot of different modes and functions you can do with this antenna. So it can increase and decrease in size. So uh, with the antenna theory, the way it works is the smaller your antenna, uh, the higher the frequency you're resonating at. The larger or longer your antenna, the lower the frequency. Uh, so basically, if you're down low, like 50 megahertz, 100 megahertz, you want your antenna to be well, as long as possible. Now I'm going to provide a link in the description, um, I'm trying to cover all the hardware stuff before we actually plug it in, but I'm going to provide a link in the description for an antenna dipole calculator, and that will show you uh, basically the lengths that you need for each sides of this in order to resonate at your target frequency. Now say like I want um, a frequency I'm listening for 140, well I just punch in 140 in the frequency calculator there and put in dipole. And it will show me at what length in inches each of these ends need to be for optimum listening for that frequency. That doesn't mean that you can't listen to 100 or 200 megahertz of that, but it's going to be best tuned to that frequency. Um, next thing I want to talk about is the ability not only to have it uh, with this polarization like a, as a straight dipole, but you can actually bend these edges in to create different antenna configurations. Now as a beginner I would start out with just the regular straight across, but as you get more advanced you'll learn that different uh, antenna configurations are uh, more efficient at uh, different situations. For example, the inverted V antenna uh, facing the horizon is really good for NNO, NOAA satellites uh, and satellite reception, uh, whereas your basic up and down straight across is really good for earthbound or earth ground station. Uh, communications. So once you have a proper antenna configuration, or you can do this later, uh, all you have to do is just screw in that SMA connector into the dongle. Like so. And the hardware is pretty much set up. Now your antenna is going to come with different uh, types of mounts and stuff so you can put it on windows and grip it into walls and stuff like that. Uh, unfortunately I do not have mine anymore. But if you do decide to do that, one cool tip is this black sheet on the antenna will actually pop off and you're actually uh, able to see the resistor there or the capacitor, sorry, and see which way it's facing. Um, you want that to be facing down. The capacitor there, you want that to be facing down. Uh, the ground is down, so uh, that will help a little bit better with reception. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and move on to the computer side of things, and this is assuming that you haven't plugged in your dongle yet and you haven't done any type of configuration on the computer. So we're going to go ahead and move over there and get that set up and with the uh, with uh, SDR Sharp so we can do the spectrum anal analyst and uh, listen to different frequencies and that type of thing. Alright, so here we are on the computer side of things, and the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and set up the drivers for our dongle. So uh, first, we're going to start out by going to the website that I have here, airspy.com. I'm going to provide a link down below. And you're going to go to the, uh, the downloads page, right? 
So once we're on the downloads page, you want to look for the Windows SDR software package. It should be here up at the top. So we're going to go ahead and hit the download button here. And it's going to be a zip file. So you'll need software on your computer to uh, unzip that. But we're going to go ahead and open it up. And you're going to need to extract this to a folder, okay? Um, this might look a little bit different from what you have. I have WinRAR, so it's a different program. But it's all the same. You need to extract. So if you might have to right-click the file on your system and extract it. You might have to open it and extract it. But you'll extract it. And I'm just going to extract it to my download slash SDR sharp and hit OK. I've already done this before, so I'm just going to yes to all on this. And it should have created a new folder in your downloads um, that is called SDR Sharp. So here's my SDR Sharp folder. And uh, from here, what you'll want to do is uh, there should be a file. called install RTL SDR. Okay, it's a bat file. So you're going to open that up and a command prompt is going to open. Now it should download uh, a program called ZADIG. Okay, this should pop up here after you run that bat file. What you want to do now is right click. Actually, what, what you want to do now is just go ahead and plug in your dongle. So go ahead and just take the USB side of your dongle and plug it into any USB port on your computer. All right. So after you plug in your uh, R2L SDR into your computer, you're going to give your computer just a few minutes to finish its automatic driver installation in case there is one. That way it doesn't cause any inter interference with what we're about to do. So once you have um, that plugged in, I would wait about 60 seconds. You're going to right click the uh, ZAIDIG file that was created and you're going to hit run as administrator and open that up. Now the first thing that you want to do once you open this up is go to options and list all devices. Um, in some Windows 10 cases, you might also uh, have to uncheck ignore hubs or composite parents. Um, but mine's automatically unchecked or checked, so I'm going to go ahead and check, uh, keep that checked. Um, the next thing you want to do is you're going to select bulk in interface, interface 0. So this is the bulk in interface, interface 0 you see here, right? Um, do not select the USB receiver interface 0 or interface 1 or anything else because you could overwrite a driver for another device. So the next thing that you want to do is double check that your USB ID says 0BDA283800. That means you've selected the correct device. Okay. Anything other than that um, is probably wrong. So the next thing you want to do is make sure that you have um, Ensure that the you have to ensure that the Windows Win USB is selected. So as you can see, it is selected. And uh, since I already have it installed, I'm having a reinstall driver um, button here. Next, you need to just click um, reinstall driver or replace driver, um, whatever button is here. You'll just hit the button there. It says the driver was installed successfully. Uh, on some PCs, you might get an error saying the warning has not been verified um, it's because the driver isn't signed. Uh, you'll just have to click yes on that. So once you, uh, once you have done that, uh, you can just go ahead and close out ZAIDIG. Z -A -D -I -G, and we're going to go ahead and open SDR Sharp. So this is the program here, located here, and this is the program that pretty much is the official um, uh, spectrum analyzer for um, the RTL SDR. So you'll go ahead and run that as administrator and it's going to go ahead and open up. Okay. So 
the first thing that you want to do is change the source from AirSpy and you're going to change that to the RTL SDR USB. So you should see that here and nothing's going to be here until you hit the play button. So once the play button is hit, um, you're going to notice that there's a spectrum, uh, the spectrum pops up with the radio spectrum and there's a lot of different things that you can do here. So once uh, you're in the waterfall uh, spectrum display here, there's audio coming down, you can adjust th the volume button here. But the first thing that we're going to do is set up our gain control. So you're going to hit this uh, cog watch here, cog wheel, whatever you want to call it. You actually have to disable the, the receiver first. And we're going to go ahead and have our device chosen. It should be zero or one, I think. Uh, say it gave me one now that I've reinstalled the driver. So your sampling rate, um, it's going to take more processing power for the higher it is. Um, and there's different types of sampling modes. You'll need like direct sampling if you're going lower um, to the HF regions. But there's a few options here. Uh, and you're, this is more like a, you know, just tweak and see what works for you because there's not a definite setting for everything. But uh, or your best bet is to just, I mean, it, unless there's combating signals, it doesn't hurt to turn your RF gain all the way up. But you can also uh, do like an automatic gain control. So uh, you'll do a tuner automatic gain control and that will handle um, pretty much the gain for you. Uh, now you're gonna notice if you do the automatic gain control, it's um, see we have a signal here, and this is actually a um, a radio station, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but you're going to notice the higher your gain is, the higher the signals are going to be, but also the higher the noise floor is going to be. So you can adjust this um, how you like, and just try to choose different settings, what works for you, or whatever signal you're looking for. So. The next thing you're going to look at here is you have different types of modes for your audio that's coming out, okay? So WFM is wide FM, NFM is narrow FM, which is uh, basically like for your ham, uh, your ham signals, uh, stuff like that. But another thing you're going to notice is once you change frequencies, you can scroll through the spectrum like this and that's fine, but you can also click the numbers. And this takes some getting used to, but if you click the number, it will change. Uh, it'll drop. If you right-click it, re like, it jumps. But if you select, what you want to do is select that first digit in the megahertz region here. And then you, you can go from there and type in the frequency you want. And then hit the enter button. And it'll bring you straight there. So, uh, that's one way to do it and you can also click on the spectrum and hold your mouse in and drag and uh, you can change your frequency that way too so just an example i'm going to find the weather um the weather alert which i think it's around 160 here this is probably it right here so narrow fm is not covering it here so what we can do is manually increase the bandwidth. And as you can hear, it is, uh, we can hear the weather, NOAA weather um, uh, broadcast like that. Now, if you zero in on it, you can, uh, you can filter out some of that static, but you can also use the preset filters here, uh, upper sideband, Lower sideband, we have AM, we have CW, Morse code, RAW, um, and there's just different types of things that you can do here. So your squelch uh, is basically a set where it won't play the audio unless a certain signal is, um, is present, like a certain powerful signal. So you won't hear all that staticky when you're waiting on idle, you can turn that up and play with it as well. The next thing you want to look at is your uh, your audio tab, and it basically 
and it's pretty straightforward to edit the settings you have to stop it but you can choose a different output device with a different speaker or something if you'd like to do that um, your AGC is settings for your automatic gain control you can do there is a setting for um, audio noise reduction I don't recommend if you're decoding digital signals um, there's more IF noise reduction, baseband noise blanker. Um, the basic, um, the basic premise is the same. So one thing that uh, you want to try to pay attention to is the recording tab. Now, once you open the recording tab, you can select the uh, the sam uh, sample format, which I think 16-bit, uh, pretty basic standard. What you want to pay attention to is what you have checked here because you can record audio, baseband, or either or. So if you're actually trying to play back whatever signal that you hear and like actually be able to hear it, you'll need to make sure that audio is checked. If you're just trying to record, say, the spectrum or a digital signal or something that you want to decode, then you'll want the baseband to be checked. Um, and that pretty much, um, you'll hit the record button if you like to record something. But that pretty much covers it. The rest is up to this kind of playing around and seeing what you want to do. Uh, if you want to start by just hearing some sounds, you can go around 100 megahertz and uh, check out the wide FM radio stations. Um, so that's pretty cool, and you can actually see those on the, the spectrum just like that. And then you can go up and around the hand bands on the 2 meter, and you can go up to 140, uh, around 144. Um, and these also has the uh, what band you're in right now too so that's really cool that you're able to see that uh, you're able to see like kind of what you're listening to um, now it's experimental but you can go down below into the HF bands um, you can type in round zero start around zero thirty um, and each of these little peaks is some type of signal it could be a digital signal, um, but we're not actually in a band right now, as you can tell. Um, but once we start moving across here, our antenna is very small right now, so we're not going to pick up a lot of signals over this way. But it's basically, uh, from here on out, it's just playing around experimentation. And once you get the hang of this program, there's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, if you guys like this video, make sure you subscribe, rate, and comment. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just go about piping some of the audio from this into different programs for decoding, like weather satellite images, and this and that. Uh, anyways, this is really just meant to be a quick start guide to get you started and uh, kind of show you how, the basics how to install the driver and use the software that comes with it. If you guys liked the video, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you comment below if there's some uh, something else that you guys wanted to see. Or if you have any feedback on what I did wrong in the video, let me know so I can correct it next time. Anyways, 73.